in the first video lecture, everything we did a substitution and we took the derivative, we always got 2x, okay? Uh, what if that factor is actually missing? Uh-oh. And so, in other words, you may not always get exactly your inside function taking your derivative. You may not always get that value. So that's what we need to see here. So here's another example. As I can see, it looks like what's up in the exponent would be a good substitution. Now, you're going to get where you kind of look at this ahead, and you might be, well, why did you pick that? Because I want to, when I take the derivative of it, I want it to give me the other piece. So let's, bear with me, let's see if this works. So if I let u equal t squared plus 1, I'm saying when I take the derivative of this, I should get what's left over. Well, if I take the derivative of t squared, that's 2t and then, of course, dt. Well, let's rearrange this because this is being multiplied, right? So there's nothing wrong with rearranging multiplication. So I have e to the t squared plus 1 times t dt. We just said we were going to let u equal t squared plus 1. The problem is this. Over here, I see that, but there's a stinking 2. If it's a number, not a variable, no problem. Just divide both sides by 2. Notice this looks exactly, I always call it, by, call it the leftover piece. It looks exactly like the leftover piece. So what I end up with when I divide the 2 off is I get the t dt. I typically rewrite du over 2 as 1 half du. And I only do this because I'm going to throw the 1 half out front. So where I see t dt, I'm substituting 1 half du. And as I mentioned, I typically throw the constant out front, 1 half. So I have e to the u times du. Now we're home free. What's the antiderivative of e to the u? e to the u. And then finally, don't forget your last step, whatever u is up here you actually have to plug that back in to get your final answer. But you can only do this dividing if it's an actual number. You can't do it if it's a variable. All right, so remember that. So let's look at something here. And if you go back and look at my slides, I said typically we like under a radical to be our u. So let's try it u equals x to the fourth plus 5, du equals 4x cubed dx. If you're kind of get, getting what's going on, you always pick the exponent that's one exponent higher because when you do the derivative, when I do the derivative, I'm going to get one exponent lower. So again, I could rearrange this. I could say, well, this is x to the fourth plus 5 times x cubed dx. My substitution, x to the fourth plus 5. Look what's left over. Kind of looks like what's left over here if I divide a 4 off. So now that looks exactly what's left over. So how I did last time, I'm going to separate the 1 fourth du, put the 1 fourth out front, this becomes u to the 1 half du, the antiderivative u to the 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1, so 1 fourth u to the 1 half plus 1, well that's like 2 over 2, 1 half plus 2 over 2, so that gives me 1 fourth u to the 3 over 2, 3 over 2. Remember when you have fractions and you're dividing, you flip and multiply. So that's that. And then my u to the 3 halves. I could, of course, cancel this 2 with that 4. And so 2 times 3 is 6. I get 1 6 u. 
you got what I need. And you say he's just the friend. Everybody. So u is x to the fourth plus 5. And don't forget that 3 halves. And, of course, my plus c. That was a doozy, right? Whew. All right. So, again, the key now is we can only apply substitution when a constant, a number, is missing. Because notice I just divided that off. But if you look at something here, if I take the derivative of the inside, I get 4x cubed. Well, that doesn't match my exponent here, so I can't use substitution. So in order to use substitution, it helps if the integrand contains the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so in other words, when I take the derivative of the inside, it should give me what's left over outside. If it doesn't, then you just can't use substitution, and that gets into some crazier stuff. All right, periodic functions. Hey, we could use substitution, right, if I kind of sort of remember periodic functions. So, again, I look at this and I say, what, what could I take the derivative of? that would give me what's left over. Well, if I, if I take the derivative of cosine, if you remember, it was negative sine. Well, I don't see any negative sine left over. So again, let's just kind of rewrite this in the order that I'm looking at, 3x squared dx. So I want this to be my leftover, so it looks like that would be my u. So u equals x cubed. The derivative of u would be 3x squared dx, which is this exactly. So we're home free. I have cosine of u du. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, because the derivative of sine is cosine. So the antiderivative of cosine is sine. And then finally, my last step is plugging back in my u value. All right. What if I have something that looks like this next one? I try and get an ink color, but it ain't working. All right. So pr pretty much I can see, you know, kind of getting the swing of this. If I take the derivative of that, does it give me that? Well, kind of. If I take the derivative of cosine, remember the derivative is minus sine. And of course, with respect to theta, well, that's like saying negative 1, right? So I can divide both sides by negative 1. And that gives me exactly that piece. So it looks like I'm going to have a negative. I'm going to chunk it out front. This becomes e to the u. This piece right here becomes the negative du. Okay, that's that right there. My antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. And then finally, my last step, plug in my u substitution to get my final answer. Now, all of these, we're just finding antiderivatives, but you could do these with the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's just an extra step, right? So if I want to find this area, so remember, integration, I'm finding the area under the curve from 0 to 16, okay, of this, my derivative here. So the only thing I know to kind of substitute is just do t plus 9, because then that's going to give me, so I have 0 to 16, 1 over the square root of u. Let's see what I have left. Well, the derivative of t is just 1, the derivative of 9, 0, dt. So that's that piece. So that becomes, and the 1 really doesn't matter because it's just 1 divided by all right, so in other words, I could say, really, this is that. So I'm just substituting that piece, du, no problem. And so I get 0 to 16. I'm going to write this. Let, let's do it in steps to remind you that u to the 1 half, du. And from 0 to 16, if I bring the 
uh, if I bring my fraction up, it becomes negative one half. And now I have it in my form that I'm ready to find my antiderivative. So negative one half plus one, negative one half plus one, and I'm going to be evaluating from zero to 16. I get um, u to the one half, right? Because that'd be negative one half plus two over two. One half, zero to 16. I can bring the two up. This is the part I forget a lot. So all I did was this step. And a lot of times I'll say, okay, plug in 16. Oh no, you got to remember, you have to go back and plug in your u. So remember the one half power is the same as the square root. Let's just do one more step. And now I'm going to plug in what the square root, which is t plus nine. And finally, I can do my f of b minus f of a. So I get two, let's just put that on the outside, square root of 16 plus nine minus square root of zero plus nine. So I get, let's go way over here, to the square root of 25 is five. The square root of nine is three. So I get, that's two, two times two. And I get my area. So with the fundamental theorem of calculus, you're just once again doing that one extra step. But please don't forget to substitute back. And that's, that's something I do a lot. Okay, so don't, don't, don't do as I do. Do as I say.